This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today to start turning your dreams into a reality. So, my curiosity question for you is, do you have scheduling problems within your company? Or even more so, your life? Seriously, we live in a world where time is money. And if you are wondering on how to become an effective and efficient person in your business and in your life, you have to take time to focus and discipline yourself to become an expert in that arena that you desire to become an expert in. But the hardest part is to really take deliberate time to be an expert, especially when you're struggling on getting your routine down. Routines are everything now. And once you become an entrepreneur, well, (laughs) the freedom is great, (laughs) but also the worst too. And so if any of this is resonating with you, then this episode was made for you. Because my guest today is Corey Warfield, and he has been published in multiple different publications such as Medium and Entrepreneur. He currently owns Shedwool. And today we're going to talk deep and dirty about his story and a number of other things such as following your dreams, partnerships, and potential futures of schedule. So without further ado, give your attention to the one and only Corey Warfield. Logan, thanks so much for having me. Hey, man. Thank you so much for coming on, dude. Like, I'm so happy I found you on LinkedIn and I've been following you and like, dude, your posts are definitely wicked awesome. So I got to give you um, right off front, like, if you're not following Corey Warfield yet on LinkedIn, like, check him out. He's killing it there and schedule, schedule.com. Definitely check that out. But um, yeah, so not many people know much about you. And, and the mission of Scratch Your Own Itch for me is, uh, you know, you have that itch that, uh, you just, you got to start paying attention to because it was something that uh, you, you found yourself, if you ignored it for too long, it would just drive you crazy. And so um, how did you get to where you got to by scratching your own itch? Absolutely. So I spent almost 20 years of my life working in restaurants and I was the guy who kind of worked my way up. I literally started washing dishes, became a busboy, promoted to a waiter, actually, because Peter from Peter, Paul, and Mary loved me as his busboy, uh, but got trained as a sommelier, became a, an F&B director, became a corporate restaurant manager, had a region of the company I was in charge of for some time, kind of realized that the, the waiters at the highest end restaurants that I was in control of were making more money than I did unless I hit every single one of my bonuses out of the park. And so I started waiting tables again and did that for uh, probably 12 more years, right? And in my career in restaurants, the first half of it was kind of pre-software. People didn't just have apps for everything. And so your schedule was the biggest pain point, especially as a waiter, but also as a manager. And it would change every week. You'd be on call. You'd have to call, find out at noon if you're working the next day. Things would change. They wouldn't need you when you got there. And it was just this huge headache. And from the manager side as well, you were always trying to make sure you were properly staffed. However, you never were properly staffed. So uh, fast forward, some of these software companies started developing and they'd have web versions. And then some of them started developing apps. And we started using one at the Prime Steakhouse that uh, I was with here in Chicago. 
and we got bought by a big company and, and it kind of surprised us, but it, this was really expensive software, I guess, so much so that it raised a red flag and they took it away from us. So I was one of the people I benefited from it the most. I had just had a kind of one-off use case. I got married down in Mexico at an all-inclusive resort and scheduling would have like, I wouldn't have had my job basically if I hadn't had software and notifications to show me that there was an error and we were able to get it taken care of. So I was super cognizant of how important the software was. They were taking it away from us. We offered to pay for it out of our pocket. They said no. They, you know, they wanted this clean balance sheet. So I looked for an alternative. I realized that there wasn't a good affordable solution on the market. Uh, and I tried to put together some things for the team, Facebook groups, Google uh, Sheets, I tried to do something with. Nothing was going to work. And that's when I did get the itch that I, you know, it was insatiable. It kept me up at night. I put, put the company together and I started the day that I really had the idea. And so now we're live where Captair has put us at number 10 on their 20 best scheduling apps, affordable scheduling apps for 2018. We're the second result on Google Play. We've got several thousand users on the platform uh, and we're still very much a startup. But the thing that I realized when I started the company was that a schedule is the perfect place for a company me to be able to hire qualified available workers on demand. So people are very much uh, looking at the model that we're getting into as Uber for work. We found that uh, on a restaurant or a construction site or a home health care schedule is when people do see the need for, you know, whether it's a, a hostess or a bar back or, or a registered nurse or anything like that. The data points that we're amassing coast to coast and internationally will let us know who in that market is free to work that night, who's qualified, available, and wants to pick up work and help companies in about 15 industries optimize their labor and help people make more money. So that's kind of in a you know, super 50,000 foot uh, overview. That's what I came through that really showed me the need for this. And it took me almost two years to really get our premium product launched on the market where people would pay for it and we were getting really great reviews. Uh, but here we are today and, and we've just grown our team and we're just starting to scale, uh, generate revenue. We are a bootstrap SaaS company and super stoked. Are you someone who's trying to build your online presence and you're finding out that it takes some time, a lot of time, and someone might recommend, hey, you should write a book and become an expert in that area so you're known for that one thing. Well, a book, <laughs> as I've gone through it and come to find, takes a long time. It takes about another year and a half. But that doesn't mean that you can't become known for your thing. I think the best way to do this is through starting a podcast and getting a website out there that can archive all the work and the content and the area of expertise that you want to be known for. Because you want to be the go-to guy when someone thinks of, hey, I want to get in really good shape, but heck, I don't know what it's going to take. And you know that your area of supremacy, as I dub it, is to get someone into really great shape. And what if you could bring on other influencers that already have a name for themselves online onto your own podcast to create content to rank in really well to be to be the go-to guy when it comes to being the enthusiast that you wish you were online. To be the influencer that you wish you were online. To be known as the expert. If you look at what's been happening in the world, it's all going towards online. So if you're still running a business and overhead's high, please reach out. Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com And this is a service where it's a done-for-you podcast. We'll get you systematically hooked up to where you have a website, your podcast, and to really get you on the roll to where your job is just to come in and have the fun part, which is interviewing the experts that you wish you could align yourself with more and to start actually making some noise and disrupt 
this whole idea that it takes another year to get really known for your area of expertise. So if this at all interests you, just email me, logan at logantylernelson.com. Again, it's logan at logantylernelson.com. You like literally hit the nail on the head when I call it scratch your own itch. Like that is, uh, it's wild too that you are doing something, man. That I think so many people are just unaware about. And and like this is kind of like that. I think part of the the whole revolution to me is is hashtag woke. Like you, some a lot of people are just unconsciously incompetent about this kind of stuff. Like about this kind of like technology that can literally change their life by just getting into the tech space and going like, you know, I don't have any work right now and I might as well just sign up for unemployment. But no, like don't sign up for unemployment because there's literally companies that can put you in employment like that day. You just kind of go out there and work for it and try. Um, and, so. and know that they're out there, right? I think that a big problem right now is there's a big disconnect. People haven't heard of a lot of the companies that are looking to get into this space so not only are the workers not aware of which platform to go to, but the companies don't have a go-to platform either. So there's this real disconnect. People know that there are probably apps they can find work on. The apps are kind of catered towards something so specific as events or walking a dog or whatever it is. Like Uber is a super great example of that. If people want to work driving strangers in their car, they know where to go, right? Sign up for Uber, get your car inspected, whatever, become a driver. But there doesn't really there's not a marketplace or a platform that's effective for calling a, a roofer or an electrician or a nurse or a waiter. And, you know, when, once people know to get to that platform for that niche, the companies don't have a go-to, you know, platform either in any industry yet. So it's not, not that it's the wild, wild west, but it just seems to be a model that hasn't really been perfected yet. And there's no companies other than us at the moment that we're aware of uh, that are really looking to fulfill this more on the employer side rather than the talent side, if that makes sense. So we've been really encouraged. There, there are some pretty huge companies, you know, thousands of locations that are looking to onboard our solution even sooner than later, but we're ahead of the curve on the, the shift fulfillment as well. We're kind of doing a super, a super quiet closed beta on that just to kind of test the tech out. And then we have a number of markets that we're going to launch into and take it from there. That's so cool. That's so cool. So I want to like, I want to, rewind a little bit um just because i think that it it would uh, give context of like who you are as a person too because i think that we now live in a world where like people are really really connected to brands and who they are as people before they are just like what they do um and so i want to like go down and and ask you about you know something that just you thought was going to go really well and it ended up not going very well unexpectedly maybe um i don't know man wherever you want to go i know that you have a plethora of stories uh but yeah maybe the worst deal that you ever tried to make in your entire career wow well so i started the company less than three years ago so i've definitely got a lot of stories in those three years and then a whole different kind of uh you know a different book right different different volumes uh of stories from before, but I think probably the most relevant would be through these, these call it three years of entrepreneurship. And I, I guess I would really, it's going to sound silly to say, but in order to talk about what I think I want to talk about, it's, I'm not going to call it out by name. And I would encourage people not to look too deep into, you know, the program that, that I may have gone through. Uh, but I went through an accelerator program and it was prohibitive. It, it, it didn't accelerate us. It decelerated us. And, we ended up having some, you know, some, some friction, I, I guess, uh, towards the end in completely separated ways. And, you know, it, it never got nasty, but it did get legal. And in retrospect, I was so excited and happy and I had these expectations. And, you know, I, I, for four months of my life, I, I spent them away from my family, away from my company. And I, I don't know that any of the skills that, that I've now kind of adopted and, and been able to use to leverage the company I wouldn't say any of them came from the program. So I think it's just super important 
to not get blinded by, you know, what's currently sexy, right? Like two years ago when I got approved or accepted, an accelerator was super sexy. And I think now a lot of people are kind of realizing like that model doesn't work for everybody. Uh, so much so that the Global Accelerator Network accepted us as one of eight companies from around the world uh, from cohorts dating back 10 years. Uh, so, you know, several thousand companies applied and we were one of eight that got in. It was their first ever post accelerator because they kind of surmised that companies coming out of accelerators are not always set up for success and sometimes are really actually hindered. You know, they, they, they come out almost uh, no, no wiser for the wear. And I think that's what happened to us. So, I, you know, I've got a lot of cautionary tales. I've got a lot of fun, you know, yeah. fun stories. But I'd say, you know, for any those, entre- For those yeah. listeners that don't know exactly what Accelerator, could you give a, a real quick context of what it is? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, accelerators are uh, incubators that will often bring you into their physical uh, location or program curriculum for uh, a number of months. Often they'll give you some money and, and often they'll take some equity for that. Uh, and, and they hook you up with mentors and they put you through sessions. I'm currently a mentor at a different type of uh, model called the Founder Institute here in Chicago that I love. And they're kind of, they understand that people need to support themselves and work nine to five jobs and they set you up for success. Otherwise, uh, for me, I kind of left left my job and my wife and dogs and everything and went out for four months and the accelerator basically introduced me to, to a number of people that had built companies that a lot of us have heard of and they'd come out and kind of tell us what worked for them. Uh, but I think the theory, you know, is that they were going to make intros that were going to change our life and they were going to help us raise capital. And in software, I think we're, we're one of the only companies, not only in our space, but, but in the software industry as a whole, that's never raised any capital. So, you know, obviously we're trying to, I, I probably wasted a year of my life out trying to raise money turns out my product was good enough that when we ended up charging people for it, they were happy to do so. And some of our quote unquote free customers uh, started paying for it and, and they're still with us. So it kind of, it, it told me that I could have been pursuing customers and revenue a lot sooner than investment. So in retrospect, I would have done things totally different, but at the same time, I wouldn't change anything because it's just one of the chapters of the story uh, that's brought us here today. Wow, man, I'm loving your, I can see that you have a growth mindset, um, really much so. Carol Dweck wrote this amazing book about the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. And I think that's one of the key assets to anybody that they, they when they see, a, you know, a negative $500,000 in their bank account, they're like, sweet, awesome. I'm going to create this. Like, I'm going to create this to be in the positive soon because they have such a a strong belief in growth mindset in themselves. So I see that in you. And I guess, um, where do you think uh, during your day you're able to actually, because I think people can't just transform their lives in one day. Um, but where do you think in your day you'd like to sort of like ruminate and, and, and brainstorm? Like where are you most energized and, and how do you get that energy to actually make these, these, these dreams inside your head become a reality? Yeah, so I think for me, a big, a big thing is waking up as early as possible. Uh, you know, I try to be up and out of bed by 5, 5.30. Uh, I love to do power poses. I love to do a little workout. I love a cold shower. And, you know, in life, you make concessions. So when I'm on the road or when I'm out doing programs or, or, or out, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll give, give talks. And when I'm by myself, 5 a.m., I'm out of the bed. I'm in the cold shower. I'm ready to take on the world. And then when I'm at home, my wife doesn't quite like me waking up so early. And, you know, she likes me. She's got a routine and she likes me to make her coffee. So I try to get her coffee ready by about 6, 630 which kind of buys me that time and, you know, in between to be productive. But then nine to five, my life anymore is pretty much just phone calls and meetings, uh, you know, pretty much almost eight hours a day, five days a week. It's pretty, it's pretty nonstop. And a lot of it is from LinkedIn. A lot of it is from potential customers. I, I work with a number of consultants, uh, you know, we've just brought on an interim CFO. And so there's so many different meetings and they're all important, but my time's so partitioned out. And as we're growing our team, I've now recently had our team start using our product at Shedwell to schedule our jobs as well. And I've always said, listen, 
you know, Slack is this amazing communication to all the communities kind of for scheduling remote teams. And we've been on Slack forever and, and I get it. And LinkedIn is this amazing platform for, you know, kind of networking and these group messages where we can all kind of tag each other in and, and, and upload content. I, I said, what we've done with Shedwell is created a platform that works great for shift workers who don't have a LinkedIn and who don't have a, uh, you know, a Slack because right now, candidly, probably 99 to a hundred percent of shift workers aren't using Slack. They're not using LinkedIn. So that's what we've created. Right. And, and we have this great platform, but they said, Corey, uh, we understand that you're used to using Slack and you're used to using LinkedIn. And, and, you know, a lot of them actually came to the company because they found out about us either through LinkedIn or someone that was, you know, a fan, fan of mine following me on LinkedIn. And uh, so, so we definitely have an affinity for LinkedIn, but they're like, listen, we get it. Uh, we get that we message on both of those, but we really need to structure our days and our weeks around uh, the schedule. And so we just, as of this week, started using Shedwell for, for our team at Shedwell. And, you know, I think we, we'd had so few few team members until recently that it wouldn't have made any sense, but it's still really cool to see them rallying behind our use case and our product. And, uh, you know, I, I think you and I are going to probably hit on a few of the one-off use cases as well, but to, to see you know, that we weren't using it, but now we can and could and should, and that we're actually uh, benefiting from using it is super powerful and compelling. Yeah, dude, absolutely. Because, I mean, really, I love how you just went through and, and kind of told us your routine and what works for you, um, because it gives context to someone that's that's trying to make this this happen for themselves. You know, like, I know for me, personally, like, dude, when I started actually like having the freedom to do whatever I wanted when I wanted, I was like, Oh gosh, um, I need to, I need to actually wake up at a certain time. Like I need to choose this time every single day to try to go to sleep. I need to do this at this time. And, and I think he just gives, uh, cause I once heard a quote, uh, that I think is amazing. It's the most powerful man in the room is the most certain. And what that means to me is that person that's certain on where they are and what they're, outcome is when they get done from leaving that certain location so um yeah to me that's just really really important uh i want to ask you where where do you want to like really 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 hone in for schedule and, and like what's their future plan what like what are you what is this i mean i know you said it's mostly for shift workers but what do you want it to really grow into Right, so I'm on the board of directors of a video game company, and we've started working on some lightweight games that live in our app environment that companies can use to train both temporary and, uh, and new hires as well. And we're really looking to leverage a scheduling platform as somewhere where uh, people in any industry can learn more skills, get better jobs, find ancillary or tertiary jobs to help feed their families and bring more income into that household. And furthermore, in addition to training and staffing, we have a really unique value proposition that's born out of the hospitality industry, which is targeted sales contests. And so they're not ads. The users being the shift workers actually have to hit a, hit a tab to open them up. So they're searching these things out. But uh, an example I give is my, my iPad mini. I won because I sold more of, more, uh, of a certain type of champagne, the Beaujolais uh, Brut. I sold more bottles of that at $260 a bottle. Uh, when I was at the steakhouse over the course of uh, January, uh, pardon, of December than any other waiter. And they'd come in, they opened a bottle, they said, here's, here's the juice, you know, uh, we know that we're up against some competition, you're doing Dom Perignon at $100 a glass, and you pro it's probably an easier, you'd probably rather sell that, but, but the person that sells the most of this is going to win a free iPad mini. Right, and so it's kind of that weird price point where people are either buying a hundred dollar bottle or a hundred dollar glass, and this is kind of in that murky water where no one's heard of you, and it's a higher price point. But I went out with full confidence for a month, and I sold far more bottles of that than anyone else in the restaurant. And I won an iPad Mini, and I still have it today, and I use it every single day, and 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 I love it. Well, take that into the, the digital world on your schedule, where at any given time, any given company can promote their product only to people who have that in their product mix or in their tool belt, right? So a brewery can have an advertisement uh, targeting a sale through the course of a market, call it Lagunitas in Chicago. Lagunitas Chicago can put a targeted sales contest to any waiter and bartender in the city that sells Lagunitas. Top sales wins $5,000, second sales wins a cruise. 
all of a sudden the entire market's going to be selling Lagunitas. You sit at a table and they walk up and say, hey, can I bring you some water? And, and how about starting with the Lagunitas beer? It's a way to absolutely rage product in a number of industries. And, you know, it's the best way that we can think of in the world uh, to reach both the managers and the workers where they live and play on their schedule. So that's where we're going. We, we look at this when, when we model out uh, leveraging even just a few of the potential partners that we have right now. We look at this as being something that can do any, you know, anywhere from six to seven figures in revenue a day at 70% profit margin. So we're making some money off our SaaS model for scheduling today. We're still very early, but we know that we can leverage this, this company and this platform at opportunity to make a huge impact globally. And then we're a pay it forward company. We're in 1% for the planet, uh, huge humanitarian aspirations. We're definitely looking to put a huge percentage of all revenues and profits in the company into making the world a better place. Uh, not only as we, we see fit, but as our community and family sees fit. So uh, we definitely are a big picture company. We're definitely having a lot of fun as we kind of prove ourselves into this space and you know we're one of the companies as well we love our competitors we love our customers we wish everyone success and so through that lens i found that linkedin is by far the most effective uh, uh traction channel for us and so i'm leveraging that to just kind of get my personal brand out my my company's brand out let people know what and why we're solving this problem and that it's a real problem and that the the, the ramifications and the solution can be hugely powerful Dude, I love it. I would love, oh man, oh, I wish we can go a total hour, but unfortunately, <laughs> uh, we're winding down. Um, and so the thing is, uh, gosh, to me, I wanted to get into LinkedIn, but I want to also bring you back on in a couple months too, to see what, uh, what you just said and, and what you're actually capitalizing on, um, just to have you on the show, because I, I really do see a, a a future relationship for us, man. And like, I really dig what you're doing on LinkedIn. I really, I'm like, wow, this guy, and I dig what your company's doing and the whole, dude, what the company stands for, like right there, like, how would you not want to like, like want to work with this company? You know? Um, it's just, it, to me, it's like, you guys are giving, giving, giving. So, um, I want to go into scratching the surface curiosity questions though, which are just, uh, 30 seconds or less type answers. So whenever you're ready for it, we'll go into that. Okay hit me with it and I'll just preface that by saying we didn't have time to go into LinkedIn, but anyone that reaches out uh, that's a connection to yours or that mentions the show, I'm happy to kind of take under my wing. I don't charge for anything I ever do. So I'm happy to spend some time and let people know what I'm doing, what's working and ways they can leverage it. So let's go into, let's go into the fire round. hundred percent. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, Hey, Logan Tyler Nelson here. I would so appreciate it if you took some time to hit the subscribe button. I really want to just honestly live and give. Why? Because I was told when I was young that if you're feeling down, the best way to feel better is by lifting someone up again. The first question I like to ask is if you could sit down on a bench with anybody, who would it be and why? Might take me 30 seconds to think of the answer. Um, <laughs> Just think fast. As, first, yeah, first. as much, much as I'm not uh, agreeing with everything he's doing at the moment, I think I'd still say Elon Musk. Mm. Yeah. Why? So what he's kind of doing with, with boring and, and wormholes and space exploration is on my, it's on my life journey as well. And I've got some really fundamental ways I would do it differently. And I, I think that Tesla Motors is losing my but I've always loved them and I'd love to just kind of beat him up a little bit about why why he's doubling down on certain things and, and how he thinks that we can use some of maybe his failures as well as his successes to move the needle because everything he's doing I think is fantastic and you know it's necessary for humanity man that is uh yeah dude actually I I share that with you I really <laughs> want to meet this guy and I go only because I really want to like I want to stab into your thought pattern, man, with some of the things that you decide on. Like, wow. Like, I, I just don't, I mean, I could go in that for another hour, but these are, these are quick, really quick uh, type question and answers. The next question I got to ask you is, well, how do you like to consume content, man? Do you like to use books, audio books? Do you watch YouTube videos, film? Like, what's your go-to, like, just number one place when you're like, I got to learn, man. This is where I'm going. 
so I, I still, I, I've set up my news apps on Apple to show me kind of the, the things that interest me so I can literally hit my headlines twice a day in less than a minute. Other than that, it's LinkedIn. If someone like Oleg posts a post and it looks relevant, I'm going to read it. I, I wish I could do more with videos. I'm putting out videos in my video yesterday. Literally, my, my title for it was, I'm sorry, I don't, re I don't watch your videos and I get it if you don't watch mine because I'm always either on a call or in a meeting. I can't just watch a video. I can't listen. If people put subtitles, I might be able to give them 60 seconds, but much as I love videos, I can't do it. And so if you have something you want me to see it, or if there's something really relevant, it's going to hit my feet on LinkedIn and I'm going to engage with it. And that's kind of where, that's where I live anymore, to be honest with you is LinkedIn. I love it. Yeah. I, uh, I see you on there a lot and I'm like, wow, Corey's <laughs> killing it on this thing, man. Um, What's one podcast though that you would recommend for someone? So he's, he's a friend of mine and he, he's on, uh, you know, guys, there's so many actually, but, but I'm really liking Mark Metry and humans 2.0 right now. Uh, I think they just took top 10 on Spotify. And then I want to shout out uh, AE wheelhouse tech, Nori tasty trade. A lot of these other uh, podcasts that I've done, I definitely recommend all of them and love all of them. Uh, Personally, I love the Joe Rogan experience. If I, you know, if I have the time to commit, the thing with Joe Rogan is uh, he always takes down these wormholes or rabbit holes, and I want to, I want to finish the podcast. But often, I only have ten minutes, fifteen minutes, so uh, <laughs> that's a difficult one. Used to love Gary Vee, but I got sick of him yelling at me, telling me that I'm that I'm uh, entitled, not trying hard enough. It's like Gary, when my, not, I'll give a lot of it away, but you know, when when I've amassed much more of an empire than you and, and it's because I worked 80 hours a week and, you know, I, I get to talk to you. I'm going to ask you why you kept yelling at me, telling me I wasn't working <laughs> hard enough when I was working harder than you the whole time. So, you know, that's kind of, I've got a lot of podcasts and I wish I had more time. I definitely love to read a book. I'm always reading a physical book, but it's one of those things. My, my, my days basically go from 5 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week. So to squeeze that time in to try to find a book, it has to be super partitioned and you know, it literally might be 20, 20 minutes after I finish my coffee or something, and it's really hard to move the needle. Uh, but I, I fly a fair amount, and when I, you know, at the airports and on the planes, an audio book is always amazing, or pulling the book out of my backpack, always, always kind of a, a great way to decompress and teach myself something. Yeah, you, 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 you got to fill the well to be an entrepreneur or an artist, I think, and so many people are they're cool with creating all the time. And I get that, but there's also phases you got to fill the well, like you'll get burnt out by like constantly working on your business and constantly trying to create content. And it's happened to me, man. It's happened to me and it's put me into a, it put me in a really deep, deep depression when I was trying to like, just get into it and fill the well again and, and to be okay with not creating. And I think that's kind of practice, but um, anyways, uh, one, one pump up song man that you'd recommend for someone so for me it's silly i actually heard this on gary vaynerchuk's uh monday to monday spotify list and i love the song i people people are starting to find this out about me but i'm, I'm a freestyle rapper i'm a reggae artist and i was in a punk band for many years so i listen to all kinds of music i've got so many pump up songs but this one is so silly uh, but it's the name of the artist is awful. His name's Lil Lil Baby, L I L Baby, like the most uninspired name ever. And I, you know, if I met him, I'd love to hug him and thank him for the song. But I'd laugh about his name with him, and then we could, you know, drink a glass of champagne. But so his name's Lil Baby. The name of the song is uh, Never Needed No Help. And it's silly because as an entrepreneur, of course, I need help. Everybody needs help. I've been trying to raise money for a year and a half for help so you know it's one of these things it's like the message is not great the the artist i don't know him but for some reason if if you were to go on to, on to spotify type in little baby needed no help and uh i think that within 30 seconds you're going to be direct messaging me on linkedin or however you want to access me and i'm talking to you logan and also all your listeners i think i'm going to be getting hundreds of people like glory <laughs> that song is insane uh, I love it. So yeah, that's my pump up song right now. And honestly, I'm a, I'm, I'm a guy where, yeah, I love punk. I love hip hop, all this stuff. I love Enya. Like I truly love Enya. There are times when there's nothing better for me than Enya uh, with a possible close second is the Cranberries. So I'm all over the place. I'm a pianist, guitarist, a drummer. So it really just kind of matters on where, where my soul wants to be at, uh, you know, in the moment. But right, right now, pump up songs, though, baby need to know help. Uh, final answer on that one. Nice. I love it. Um, I love it. So I just got two more questions for you. 
and then we'll round it out. Um, <laughs> I, by the way, I put little baby into YouTube, so it's going to be my next listen while I'm walking <laughs> to the gym. Um, uh, so what is, uh, where, where's one place that people can find you? I mean, honestly, there's only one place people can find me right now. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I am kidding, but I'm not kidding, but it's LinkedIn. If you go to LinkedIn, there's no way you can't find me. People that even like me that follow me are like, Corey, how are you the only person I see on my feed anymore? And I'm like, uh, cause I'm just, I, I got this figured out and I'm being strategic. So I'm not, I'm only, I only have 12,000 or something uh, followers right now because I want to have a relationship with every single one of my first 50,000 followers. I'm really getting there, right? Like there are people I don't know them that well yet, but I definitely engage with them and I'm watching them and I know what they do for a living. If they need work, I'm trying to make those connections. I, you know, I've kind of got my powerhouse influencers that, that we love each other. And so, you know, when I need a post to hit thousand likes or something, it's pretty doable if, if I follow my formula. And, and right now I'm teaching other people how to do that. So uh, all day, every day, you can find me on LinkedIn, playing with the algorithm, uh, engaging heavily and trying to help out as much as I can. Dude, I love it, man. Bro, serious, serious virtual bro hug right now to you because the man is, this guy's honest and sincere and um, I just love it, man. But um before I hit this last question, I just want to acknowledge you, man, for, for, for just what you've done already for me and my own life and, and being on LinkedIn and, and, and reaching out like that and, and what your company stands for. Like, I'm not trying to like toot your horn too much, but you know, the fact is that I don't have a bunch of guests that have companies that are set up to help the middleman, the guy who is struggling the hardest, you know, the guy who doesn't have all these connections and this company is for that and it's clearly because of the the man behind the mask and that's you so i really appreciate that man wow thanks so much uh 100 so i want to leave bro hug bro hug back at you before the last <laughs> question oh man thank you i just want to leave off um I really think answers are great and everything, but I think questions are even more important. That's why, you know, scratch your own itch and, and curiosity questions. That's why it's just part of my philosophy. What is a self inquisitive question? Just one question someone could ask themselves, maybe, you know, on the hour, every other hour, just to just, just keep them, uh, keep them going or something. What's holding me back. Nice. And that's super <laughs> sweet and simple. Yeah. I think that, Answering that question and listening to the answer, especially when it comes from inside of yourself, is hugely powerful. And you know, if if there's an answer, then then, then act upon that until there's no answer, because there really the answer should be nothing. There should be nothing holding you back. We create our own reality with our minds and intentions, and love is the way forward, and empathy is the best sales strategy, and all these things that you hear me and other people on LinkedIn talking about lately, like it's that simple, right? So if something's holding you back identifying it being honest about it finding you know whether it's an accountability partner or a network that doesn't play that stuff uh you know that's the way to get ahead and get forward and, and to overcome anything and everything so believe in yourself you can accomplish anything you try to and there are a lot of people out there like myself that are here to help in any way that we can oh man that's freaking awesome dude i love it man i love it um <laughs> What's holding you back? I think I'll end it there then. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks again, Corey, for uh, being on the show. I really appreciate it, man. It was a pleasure, Logan. We'll talk soon. Awesome. All right, late. Wow, you made it to the very end of the show. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch with your host, Logan Tyler Nelson. To make it to the end? Gosh, that doesn't happen very much nowadays. I mean, especially with the constant distraction. So, I appreciate all of the efforts that you just took out of your day to make it to the end. And if you hit that subscribe button and leave a review, you would have no idea what that would mean to me. So thank you so much for 
taking the time to hit that subscribe button. And if you leave a review, check it out. Just screenshot it, send it to me, and I'd love to host your review out on the show. But don't ever forget, like I say, you matter and you're enough. Love is the main reason for how all this happened. Love for all my fans, love for all the shows. Got love for all my memories, no matter where I go. Even if I'm out to nothing, I know there's always something. It's not a fitness test, but it'll always.